Hey, what's up? Like, totally time for 90210. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the 90210 show. My name is Mark. With me, as always, is my fiance, Carol. How are you doing today, Carol? Hey, what's up? Much has been a good week. It's February 27th, 1998. Man, it's flying by already. It is. Almost March. 1998. Maybe that means winter is finally over. Winter. I hate winter. It's over. We need to move somewhere warm. You, you don't like winter? No, you know this about me. Mm. Like, this is not news. Where do you want to move warm? Florida, Hawaii, California. Florida. So humid in Florida. So? There are earthquakes in California. So? And Hawaii is expensive as hell. <laughs> so? <laughs> so I don't want to move to any of those places. All right, well, you're shoveling the snow for the next, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 years, however long we're going to live. Depending on our age. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess that's what I'm going to be doing. Maybe I'll buy a snow blower. Okay. To blow the snow. Because we're the Rockefellers. Maybe I'll just get a, a leaf blower and use that <laughs> to blow the snow. There you go. <laughs> anyway. But you know who never has to shovel snow? The people in Beverly Hills. That's right. Assholes. On 90210. The only snow they're encountering is up their nose. <laughs> right. So who do we want to start with? Let's start with listener Craig. Craig, this one's for you. What do you mean? Uh, which storyline do we want to start with? Oh, okay. In this episode of 90210 that we watched. Who do you want to talk about first? This one's really for Roman. Um, so weird. Let's talk about, I don't know. Who do you, you, you're the one that, what you've never given me this option before. I'm shaking things up. You, why don't you tell us what you want to do? You're in control of where we go. Okay, weirdo. Um, making me mad. You're making me mad. Why? Because you are like not just making a decision. Because you are um, making me feel bad. Can you not remember anything about the show? <laughs> what is going on? I remember. Okay, Steve. Um, last episode, we Stephen. We found out. That he was getting in trouble for plagiarizing Brandon's paper. No, we found that out this episode. Really? Yes. I felt like it was a continuation from last time. No. Oh. It was a continuation. God, you do forget. <laughs> it was a continuation that he... We saw him steal the paper. We knew okay. he stole the paper. I guess we just knew it was coming. But, but um, they said he was in front of a three-panel committee of the dean and, I don't know, two of his lackeys. I guess they're lackeys. I don't know. But he said, or henchmen, he says, hey, Steve, you know what this is about? He's like, no, it's not about the fraternity, is it? He's like, no, it's about you stealing this paper. Yeah, and they actually have Brandon's paper on hand. Yeah, they do. That's awfully fucking convenient. I feel like the only reason that they brought uh, Professor, what the fuck's his name back? Randall. Yeah. Was just for that reason, so they could be like, see, look, we still have the paper. That's a surprise for the, from this episode, too. What? That Professor Randall's back. Yeah, Professor Randall's back. Oh, my God. You look like you're falling asleep. The fuck? You do. You look weird. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Is that comeback still under construction? <laughs> like, like the house in this episode? Right. God. Um, but yeah, they they bring S Professor Randall smack back for humanity. Mm, slap back. What in the fuck is happening? Slap right now? back for humanity. I'm trying to think of it because it's Habitat for Humanity, Comeback for Humanity. I'm trying to think of like, you know. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I'm workshopping it. Jesus. <sighs> You're making me regret life choices right now. Um. What? The, the ring on your finger? <laughs> no. Um, okay. Steve. Steve. <laughs> That's his name. 
he's being told that you know he's he's going to be I don't know disciplined or whatever. Do, do they? <laughs> did they say initially? They initi- get Claire in there and like you're going to be disciplined. Did they initially say that they were going to uh, expel him? Yes. Okay. So yeah, he's being expelled. And he was like expelled for and, this. And then he grabbed his collar and and steam shot out of his ears. <laughs> and he said, and they said. Yeah, unless you want to uh, have a full meeting of the committee next week or whatever. Which apparently he does. I guess, yeah. I don't know. They haven't said that yet, but mm. that's what's, they didn't explicitly come out and say that's what he's doing, but I guess that's what he's doing. But he expects Claire's father to just swoop in and fix this for him? Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Is that like, I, I mean, he's he's such an entitled little prick. You know, I, they did all this work, like, trying to make him a better person, and then they yeah. do something like this. It's, like, kind yeah. of frustrating. He does constantly slip back into asshole Steve. I guess that's more realistic, though, that, yeah. you know, if he, he tends towards being an asshole, he's not going to just become Mr. Wonderful all the time. Yeah. But he did say, what did he say? So, yeah, he told Claire. He said, yeah, I stole this shit, Claire. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm just gonna fix it. Can't your father fix it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's like, "What? How are you gonna fix it? Well, I'm gonna talk to your father." He, he yeah, he gives the most uh, the most rich white man answer I've ever heard in my life. Well, I'll just talk to the people I know in power and get them to to solve it. Right. So he talks to Claire's dad, and he's not gonna help him. And Claire tells him that he has to talk to Brandon. He wasn't even gonna tell Brandon. Which is, like, ridiculous, because of course it's going to come back to him. Like, what is he even thinking? He said he was going to fix it on his own. Idiot. And, by the way, though... He's an idiot for the whole thing. He is. By the way, though, when him and Claire were talking, she says to him that I gave up a prince and a... I don't remember... Five and a candle. Yeah. For a white-collar criminal... Like, is that going to be the rest of their lives? I gave up a prince right? for you. Yeah. I gave up a prince for you. Like, you should have stayed with the prince then. Steve, did you take out the garbage? No. I gave up a prince for you. Right? <laughs> I'm honestly surprised she didn't break up with him again over this, though. Like, she is really pissed. Really disgusted with him. And the, and the fact that his response is, I'm going to go talk to your dad. Yeah. Like, that should have been it. I, I If I were her, I'd break up with him. If you were her, you'd be saying, Princess, Princess, who will tell you? Um, so he tells Brandon, and Brandon is understandably, understandably, what? Pit, understandably, understandably, uh-huh. <laughs> understandably pissed. Uh-huh. Um, but he gets so much more pissed because Randall is Randall. The Professor Randall is the reason that they got caught. He had Brandon's paper. Yeah. Saved it. Because it was so good. Right. And so he knew when he was reading Steve's paper, hey, I've read this before. Do you think that, do you think that he saved it because it was so, like, do you think that Randall just started saving things of (laughs) of Brandon's in the hopes that he'd be able to use them against him one day? (laughs) No. I mean that would be hysterical, but no. He 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 broke up his marriage, and he got uh, Randall like fired or yeah. I mean he did or, pretty much destroy the guy's life. Yeah, I'm surprised. He, I don't even know how he's back. Right. Yeah, because he did. He got fired for being like a racist or something. No, he got fired for being favoritism to the sports to the athletes. Oh, okay. Student athletes. But remember, remember Brandon's. Uh, uh, season five black friend or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. They give him a black friend every once in a while to just to show that he's not racist or whatever. Or that the show is not racist. But uh, yeah, he, he had that uh, season five black friend that is just gone now. Yeah. Did he ever uh, did he ever achieve his basketball dreams? We'll never know. <laughs> you know why? Because he's on the pile. It's a co-ed pile now. Oh my Anyone goodness. that Brandon touches dies. <laughs> Stay away from Mr. Walsh. It's like that witch in Thinner or whatever, you know? Oh, my God. You ever read that Stephen King book? I, I, I've seen the movie. What movie? They didn't make a movie out of that. Really? 
Didn't they make uh, something similar? No. Hmm. No, they haven't made it into a movie. Okay. I don't think. Weird. Maybe they did and I missed it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But it's uh, Richard Bachman. Yeah. But it was the last one. It was like, it was during that time period where it was like Stephen King writing as Richard Bachman. Because everybody knew. Because of some asshole. Anyway. Anyway. We won't go into it. Brandon um, is going to be charged with collusion. Yes. So Brandon tries to talk to Professor Randall about it. And he's like, hey, you know, I'm completely innocent. He's like, hey! <laughs> he gets he gets uh, Harry carried his dog to him. He's like, hi! <laughs> Professor Randall! Right, right. Um, first he went to the dean, too, because he's all buddy-buddy with the dean. And he's like, just tell Professor Randall you didn't do it. Yeah, tell him to drop the charges. That's the best thing to do. But he won't. No, because Brandon ruined his marriage and the life. Yeah, and he has proof. I mean, he has the paper. Well, he says, as far as I'm concerned, you're guilty until proven innocent. But the whole reason that innocent until proven guilty exists is because this didn't happen. Brandon didn't give Steve the paper. So how is he supposed to prove an event didn't happen? Right. That's impossible. Yeah, it's not good. This is not a good situation. But I have a feeling that they'll find their way out of this problem because they're rich white dudes, and that's how the yeah. show works. She's hooked on a feeling. <laughs> but Brandon is understandably very, very, very upset. Yeah. Um, then we've got Kelly and Mark, who are invited to Casa Walsh yeah. for Thanksgiving dinner. Huh? They love calling it that. So weird. Mate, it reminds me, didn't they have a, a maid that, like, uh, no. Mrs. Walsh was, like, really friends oh, with? Oh, yeah, they did. Like, really briefly, yeah. She's gone, too. Yeah. Where did all these people go? She must be on the pile, also. Remember way back in season one when that foreign language teacher was intimating she was going to have sex with the ma- black male principal? Yeah. And that never, nothing ever came from that. Nope. They nope. just completely abandoned that storyline, and next thing we know, we had uh, Miss Teasley. <laughs> maybe, maybe off screen, he did stuff that he wasn't supposed to with that teacher, and that's why he's not there anymore. She killed him. Maybe she was a black widow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> anyway, yep. Uh, Kelly and Mark are going out of town for Thanksgiving. Yeah, to Montecito. Which, like, I assumed when she said it that they were going to see his family. So did I. But I guess Montecito is just like a resorty area. I guess. Like, why would you go out of town for Thanksgiving? Like, she has family. That's, yeah, she has some, yeah. Like, it, it just seems like an odd choice. Hey, let's just go on vacation. Because she's with Mark. Instead of eating turkey with our friends. Yeah, instead of eating, yeah. Wait till you see the turkey that, uh, that <laughs> right? she missed. She dodged a bullet. Yeah, well, kind of. <laughs> Oh, well, yeah, that's true. They're all going to suffer the same fate. <laughs> There's no way for her to avoid it. Um, but, yeah, so they spend all day driving around trying to find a hotel because their reservation got canceled somehow. Yeah, here's the thing. She's like, yeah, uh, I'm calling to check on our reservation or whatever, and they're like, oh, it's not, you know, you, you didn't confirm your reservation. And she was like, oh, I thought when you called back that was you confirming the reservation. And he's like, no, you know, whatever. It's like, how many fucking times she need to call this place? To, right? Like, they, uh, so presumably they called to make the reservation. Right. Then the place called them to have a conversation. About the reservation. Right. And then they were supposed to call back to confirm. It's like, this is so weird. Yeah, we want this reservation. Are you sure? <laughs> I mean, most places will, like, give up your room if you're not there by a certain time, but that's not what was happening. No. Very weird. Ridiculous. So, apparently, like, I guess rich people maybe do this all the time, because, like, there's no rooms available in Montecito. (laughs) There's no rooms at the inn. Right, because it's Thanksgiving. Which I don't understand, because when when people travel on Thanksgiving, not everyone does, obviously, but when people travel on Thanksgiving... They typically stay with family, don't they? Like 
I, I would I, think so. I wouldn't imagine that Thanksgiving is a big hotel holiday. I mean, I traveled for Thanksgiving once, and I stayed with the person's family. Wow. That's what you do. Well, who'd you stay with? Never you mind. What the fuck? <laughs> you really want to know? Just give me initials. Um, MC. Okay. I guess I know who you're talking about. <laughs> okay. Where, in California? Yeah. Oh, okay. That was Thanksgiving. All San right. Jose, yeah. All right. I didn't know that was Thanksgiving. Yep. Um, anyway, now I'm all lost again. So, okay. At the... <laughs> I know it's awful. Everything's uh, everything's going according to plan. <laughs> She's lost. Um, so Mark, I'm dis- all lost in the supermarket. Oh goodness! I can no longer shop happily. You love that fucking song, The Clash. Mm-hmm. Um, he decides that they're just gonna go have fun anyway even though they don't have a room yet. Right. So he's like, you know, we're going to go to the same hotel we were supposed to go stay at, and we're going to use their shower and their pool and all that stuff. And This is another white person attitude thing, yeah. where he's just like, all you got to do is walk in there like you fucking own the place. Yeah. Just it, say, I'm Kelly Taylor from Beverly Hills. It worked, though. Yeah, apparently. Um, and then he got them a reservation at a four-star restaurant pretending to be Ronald Reagan's son. Yeah, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense because Ronald Reagan Jr. is a lot older than Mark is. <laughs> I don't think they realize how old Ronald Reagan is. He was like 70 when he became president or something oh, wow. like that. Yeah. He was already f- really old when he became president. Ronald Reagan Jr. is like 50. <laughs> he could be his grandson, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but it works. They so get the reservation. And much like my Thanksgiving in San Jose. Oh, really? There's caviar. <laughs> oh. It's a California thing, I guess. Fancy. Right, right. Did you have it? Um, I, I don't think so. I had some pate. Oh, it was oh, not good. Goose liver pate. Oh. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, he feeds Kelly a... That is fancy as fuck, man. Yeah. California is a fancy ass place, I guess. Wow. I'm sure not all of the whole state of California is fancy. You but. passed all that. San Jose is not very fancy. You passed, <laughs> you passed all that up for me, huh? <laughs> yes, sir. I won the lottery. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> um, Caviar sucks. I don't like it. Yeah, I mean, like, I think I might have tried it then. I don't know. I, I don't hate it like you hate it. It's very salty, and it's it has a weird texture. It bursts in your mouth, and it's got, like, a weird texture. Um, and it's way too salty. Well, I, I'm sure she regrets the decision. She immediately blames the caviar. I don't know how she would know which of the things and they ate. I don't either. I mean, I guess caviar might have more of a tendency to go bad, but I mean, lobster does too. Yeah, they ate lobster. They ate caviar. They had champ. She said she mentioned champagne, but I, I mean, mean, I that's think that's not going to make you sick. Well, I think at that could. point she was just uh, relaying everything that had come back. Oh wow. <laughs> Because, yeah, they have this lovely dinner, and then just as uh, he's, like, putting the moves on her. Yeah, they, well, they get a place at the Best Nest uh, fucking hotel. It's like a Best Western or whatever. It sounds knockoff. awful, though. It's one of those motel-type places. Yeah, I mean, it's, like, the kind of place that I would stay at. But It's a Motel 6. <laughs> but the name just makes me think of, like, a rat's nest. Like, it just seems dirty. <laughs> And like I would, I, it's just an uncomely kind of name. I get what they're going for though with best nest. What? It's like you know, like this is your nest. This is your place to be mm-hmm. safe. And like I get what they're, I get what, it doesn't exist. But I get, I <laughs> right. get what they're going for with it. But I, I think there's a reason it, that the name doesn't exist in real life because I agree it. There's something about those two words together that just they it hits the ear wrong. Yeah. Um. But yeah, he's putting the moves on her. They still have never had sex. I'm sure he's thinking, now I'm finally getting laid. We're in a hotel. Yeah. We're sharing a bed. Yeah. He's like, close your eyes. Imagine it's fucking, that it's all this fancy stuff instead. Because that's what gets you wet <laughs> when you're a rich bitch. <laughs> and she's like, oh, I'm, so, I'm getting so hot. And he's like, me too. And she's like, no, I'm fucking flushed. And yeah. And then she throws up. Um, and then he throws up. So, you know, fun night. Well, but- she's like... She goes, she goes, maybe it's food poisoning. 
And he's like, oh, how could it be? It was, was a, a four-star four place. Restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> Bacteria, bacteria doesn't wear a coat and tie. It can't get in. <laughs> and then immediately he gets sick too. So yeah. But you know, I gotta say, I, I feel like they have a chance as a couple because in the morning they're all snuggly with their washcloths on their heads and they're like yeah. happy. Yeah. And if you can go through something like that with a person and still oh, yeah. be happy and snuggly, then you yeah. got something good. Yeah, we've done that. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. Not food poisoning, but. A very, very <laughs> virulent stomach virus. Oh, God, it was awful. So yeah. that, that's the worst sickness I've ever been through. For sure. It was It was so bad. For, for like, days. <laughs> yeah, no good. And we were going on a trip. Yeah, we lost, like, 10 pounds <laughs> before we left. Right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's, what, that's pretty much all that happens with them. Yeah, then they go back. Yeah. But they don't go back for Thanksgiving. They're no. like, no, they're, they're just going to stay right where they are. Yep, they don't show up. So the main story. The main event. Is David. David L. Silver. The episode pretty much, I think, started with him and Donna, where she sees him in the, like, I don't know, cafeteria, courtyard, wherever the fuck, where they hang out at school. The student union. Yeah. And she's like, you look terrible. Yeah, thanks. And he's thanks, Donna. Yeah, he's like, oh, I just pulled an all nighter. Oh, for your test. Oh, I blew the test off. Yeah. So what was he doing? I don't know. He never explains that. <laughs> Maybe he spent all night studying and then just didn't take the test. <laughs> God knows. She's like, you know, you really need to see a doctor. I don't know what's wrong with you. And he gets all pissed and he just flies off the handle right. and starts like yelling and throwing things and he hits the wall and hurts his hand. Yeah. And this woman comes up and she's like, are you okay? He's like, this has nothing to do with you. Get out of here. <laughs> Holy I, shit. I don't like this. I don't like this dynamic. I don't like that, Di- that Donna is again finding herself in an abusive relationship. Basically. Well, he's not abusing her. He's not physically abusing her. But like yelling and throwing shit and punching the wall because he's mad at her. That's not healthy. It's, and he's no, it's been not. very unkind to her yeah. several times. It's not healthy and it's traumatic. Yeah. But I don't think he's being abusive. Like, I don't even think he's being verbally abusive necessarily because I think it's it's all coming from his 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 mental state. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I guess I guess you could still be verbally abusive and insane. Yeah. Probably easier to be. Verbally abusive. I mean, just because, you know, he has a reason for the way he's acting doesn't mean that it's okay. Yeah, but I mean, it's not like he's like, it's not like he's saying like, oh, you're a piece of shit or whatever. No, no. I mean, like, okay, I guess maybe abuse is too strong, but it just seems like a bad situation for her. Well, I agree it does. But she takes him to the hospital and he gets his hand all sewn up and they can tell something's wrong with him. So, well, Matthew Lawrence, a.k.a. Uh, Mel W. Silver knows exactly what's going on. Well, yeah, he says that he thinks that he has what his mom had. Um, Manic depression. Yeah. So they want to keep him on a psychiatric, 72-hour psychiatric hold for observation. Yeah. And who's he, who, who does he talk to? <laughs> Tony Todd, the candy man. Yeah. It's, that's so jarring. Like It is. Like... There are parts in this episode where David's talking and, like, Tony Todd, Dr. Whatever, I'm just going to call him Candyman, <laughs> uh, is leaned over him and he's like, that's right, David, I don't think so either. And it's like, <laughs> with that, like, growly voice yeah. of his and stuff, and it's like, that that would make anyone insane. I think everyone that goes to that, uh, that hospital starts out sane. <laughs> At one point, David has a nightmare, and I'm like, oh, the Candyman's going to be stalking him in this nightmare, and it's going to make sense. (laughs) Storyline. No, no. the nightmare, though, again, rich dude shit. He's, like, so traumatized from seeing his mom poor on the street and homeless. And so he... The worst fate. Yeah, so he's having a nightmare that he sees her... And that it's that it's him that he's the one on the street and homeless and like right. oh my god yeah that that would be the worst thing ever. His nightmare should have been oh my god 
I'm living in a duplex. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Now, this whole time, too, while he's at the hospital, Donna is just hanging out in the fucking waiting room. Yeah. What, what is she days. doing? Yeah, he's supposed to be there for three days. His dad leaves. He's like, I have patience. She's like, oh, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stay right. here and wait for news. Like, if he has you down as an emergency contact, yeah. they'll call you. Yeah, if you, there's anything to say. You know, the Candyman knows how to telephone. Or, I mean, if he has urgent news, he'll just appear in your mirror. <laughs> I mean, it's not like you're waiting for a baby to be born. Right. Like, what the fuck? He's been admitted. Go home. Yeah. Nobody would stay like that, except, I guess, her. She's such a codependent. She really is. Mm, I don't like it. But she does stay. Yeah. And Candyman figures out that... David doesn't need medication. Did you uh, catch that? I don't like that either. That is bullshit. There is no, like, there is no case of manic depression where it's oh, it's so mild that right. you don't need any medication. I, having no, having none of the training that you have, having none of the the insight or the the reading that you've done about it. Even like I was like, I don't think that's right. <laughs> that does not seem correct. No. Like, oh, you you got just a touch of the manic depression. <laughs> What the fuck? Oh, God. This show. I mean, I just, was like, okay, I, I guess. I thought to myself, I don't know if this is true or not, but I thought to myself, sure, I guess there are cases that are more severe and less severe with manic depression. I guess that makes sense, but sure, I don't think, are. like, his mom's just like, but you've got to learn how to make better choices. And I'm like, that's not how this disease works, is it? Right? She's like, you don't have to learn it the hard way like I did. What? Right. Like... Is he just going to know how to, like, not be manic? Like, that's not... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, they're like, go to therapy. That's the answer. You don't need the medication. You need therapy. And it's like, what's the therapist going to say? Yeah. Hey, tell your, uh, t- tell your brain chemistry to straighten itself out, all right? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Right. I mean, sorry, you're not going to learn, like, how to, like, do deep breathing and meditation so that you're not manic depressive. Yeah. I mean, they they give him lithium or whatever, right? That's normally, yeah, what they would use, a mood stabilizer of some sort. So, yeah, like, if she's more severe or whatever, maybe she needs a higher dose of lithium than he does. But he needs something. Something? Yeah, he needs something. And I'll tell you what, they haven't been portraying it as particularly mild. Right, yeah. But, I mean, I think it's just more convenient for them. They're like, oh, we got to back it down now because right. we want to move on to another storyline. Exactly. So let's make sure he's make, functional. We want to make sure this is all okay and there's no... Because, yeah, that's what happened. Is they wrote this story and they're like, oh, but wait, he's going to have to be on like a lot of medication and different like therapies and stuff like that. We're going to have to fucking talk about that all the time. Ah, oh, let's just say it's... Uh, it's 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 half manic depression. <laughs> but I'm sure they'll keep it in their back pocket and oh, pull yeah. it out when they need Absolutely. something to do. David, you you, didn't, you skipped your therapist appointments. <laughs> I forgot how to breathe. <laughs> no, I'm manic. <laughs> well, and like okay, in this episode, um, I I still don't understand um, what happened here, but like Willie, Willie I, is. Not Willow. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the the cook at the peach pit. Yeah. They said something about like he was saving money to put his ki- kids or grandkids through niece college, and niece and nephew. And then somehow this translated to him being on the Habitat for Humanity thing. Like I don't understand. He needed a house. But what does one thing have to do with the other? I don't know. He's poor. <laughs> okay. Because he's black. So and on the show of Beverly Hills, ten oh two and now. Right. So they um they all get together and help with the Habitat for Humanity for Willie. Habitat for Humanity. <laughs> habitat. And at the end, that's where they are having their Thanksgiving dinner. That's what they should do. Yeah, that's what. But the, real quick though, because they yeah they're all helping out building this house and everything. Uh, but that's they should uh, for people like. The, the goth people or, like, you know, people that aren't necessarily right for Habitat for Humanity, they should uh, they should create Habitat for Humanity. <laughs> or they give out free tattoos. Oh, my goodness. Habitat for Humanity. Sure. <laughs> 
But yeah, that's where they had the really weird fucked up turkey. They did not have Thanksgiving at uh, Casa Walsh. They no. they had it there, and it looked like a completely uncooked bird. Yeah. If it was even a bird. I don't know what the fuck that was. <laughs> Nobody ate it, it thank God. It like modeling clay. It was weird. But David shows up at the last minute and sits down with Donna. And he's fine now. Yeah. He, no medicine. No. I don't All even, he needed was the candy. I don't even think face. he was in there for the full three days. No. And uh, he's like, he's like, oh, I'm not crazy, Donna. <laughs> And she's like, you're not? And he's like, well, I'm crazier for you. No, that made more sense than what he said. I know. I had to clean it up because my brain couldn't make sense of it. Right. But yeah, it was weird. What he said couldn't be understood by a human. (laughs) And then they're kissing. And it's like, are they back together now? Probably. Like, stop it. Just stop. They They weren't able to get together before because he had this mental disease that he didn't know about. And now he's okay. Even though nothing happened. Everybody that's with Donna has something wrong with them and then later is cured. <laughs> She's magic. Yeah, like Ray being a, a, a spousal abuser. Right. And now he's just a fucking hero. Exactly. Oh, my God. O.J. Simpson should go on the show. <laughs> Could rehabilitate himself. <laughs> Run for president. Right. Be the first black president. President Simpson. All right, writers of 90210. This is the next storyline. Get yeah. OJ on there. Yeah. We're all over it. Have him have a, a relationship with Donna. <laughs> I think that was it. <laughs> then he can cut David's head off. Oh, my God. <laughs> Stay away from Donna. She's a Lou. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's fun to laugh about uh, two horrific murders and the guy that probably got away with it. Hey, if you don't laugh, you cry. That's right. So I think that was all that happened in the show, though, yes? That's all that happened in this episode. All right, so. If we want to go back to the beginning, the Walsh's move. Oh, Jesus Christ. Minnesota, (laughs) too. So you can write us at latefee1994 at awl.com. Mm-hmm. Check out our website at www.retrolatefee.com mm-hmm. and share the tapes with your friends. Right, we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.